Hello, and welcome to the show about fun facts, a little bit of science. Today, we are talking about 3D printed homes. We are seeing massive labor shortages in a lot of industries, but when the U.S. is about 4 million homes shy of demand, this can have a huge impact on our communities. Costs for homes will go up and supplies are already in high demand. After the skyrocketed prices of lumber from the chaotic year of 2020, how can anyone really afford to build a house? The average sales price of a new home in 2020 was 389,000 US dollars, and now it's $408,000. And if you look at this fun little graph, <laughs> it used to be a lot less. So what do we do? Uh, we don't have enough workers. Supplies cost too much. We are way under production on building homes, and nobody born after 1980 can even afford to buy a home. <laughs> It's 2021. We are living in a world of incredible technology, but for some reason, we haven't really changed the way we build our homes. But with 3D printing, the entire industry is changing. The cost of these homes is half of that of a traditional constructed home. Less workers, way less time, a substantial reduction in waste, and much lower overhead costs. So that $400,000 home is now $200,000 or less, and you can move in within a couple of weeks. The structure will be much more sturdy than a wood-built home, which is great for areas affected by natural disasters. And the fact that we don't need to cut down so many trees is probably one of my favorite parts. Imagine a whole neighborhood built with this technology and then surrounded by trees. Now you have shade, which will cut down on electricity costs and give you cleaner air. We can potentially be looking at a true advancement in our way of living. Toss some solar panels on the roof and around the neighborhood, put everyone in electric or hydrogen cars, and we can have a clean city. It's probably never going to happen, though, and uh, it just sounds nice. It's, uh, it's nice to dream, right? Right? The material, as used by the company Icon, can withstand extreme weather while being more efficient than ever before, and it's mold-resistant. They use a cement-based material called Lavacrete. It's safer and can withstand fire, flood, wind, and other natural disasters better than traditional structures. The company partnered with New Story Charity to build 500 square foot houses for families in need of shelter. And they can be built in five to seven days, which means those in need will be living in comfortable, humane homes quickly. How does Icon do it? Well, they recently unveiled their new Vulcan construction system, which weighs over 9,000 pounds. It's a massive 3D printer that was engineered from the ground up for mass-producing homes with speed and accuracy. This particular printer can build structures up to 3,000 square feet and do it two times faster than their previous system. If you're enjoying this episode, be sure to like and subscribe. Let's continue the conversation down in the comments. As far as the options of printing, you're not limited to this kind of stacked raw look. The walls can easily be smoothed out to look more traditional, but it doesn't stop there. You can essentially print anything you can imagine. Because of this technology, the shape of the house can be curved, square, a giant sphere, or whatever you want. If you hate the look of this and want a traditional looking home, then that's totally possible too. The walls can be printed to look like shingles, brick, or even wood. But that's not all. You seriously can just have about anything you want. Any image you can put into a computer can be put into a 3D printed structure. Uh, patterns, textures, shapes, or even your freaking face, man. And though it may not look like it from many of these images, the walls are actually insulated. So they are very energy efficient. This technology is also being considered by NASA for the moon. That's right, they are looking at 3D printed shelters that would allow astronauts to live on the moon. As we have seen over the years with in-home 3D printing, there have been amazing concepts brought to life with very little cost. Prosthetic limbs can be printed at affordable cost instead of, you know, the medical industry charging you an arm and a leg. <laughs> no? Okay. And in a previous video, I talked about how Porsche is using this technology to make better parts for their vehicles. The printer itself only needs two operators in most cases and can be fully set up in under 48 hours. It prints more than three feet per second. Why aren't we seeing this in more widespread use? Well, the process affects every level of construction. The planning phase is very different and even the permits that are needed can be different. 
you need to have workers and designers that are experienced in this new technology. Your traditional laborer, which again is seeing a huge shortage, is either not needed at all or needs new training. And that all makes a lot of sense. Uh, we are a high tech world now and should be advancing everything we can. Building a home in this way has a lot of positive outcomes and is actually adapting to our younger generations. Kids aren't learning as many trade skills like construction. And I mean, to be honest, why should they? It, it seriously doesn't make sense to send a kid off to learn an outdated skill. We are advancing as a species and pushing technology like this will only help us move faster. And just to be clear, this still requires electricians and many other skilled workers of different trades to complete a structure like this. And electricians, for example, they will be able to drastically cut down their time spent on one location. They won't need to cut any holes for outlets as they will be pre-made during the printing process. And feeding the lines will be even easier. This means they can complete more projects in less time. Like we see in many industries, these new technologies mean less jobs in one area, but a whole new set of jobs in another. New skills that match the actual demand. Each generation has a new experience with how they utilize computers and the digital world. We should be fighting change, but rather adapting to it. Change could be good. Each time a job is replaced by a machine, we open up new opportunities for advancement and new jobs. It's been happening our entire existence as a species. And even though it upsets one group, we still push onward and become better because of it. I hope we can find a way to use our massive amounts of waste to create a new printable material. If we could even just turn our plastics into buildings, we might have a new way of cleaning up after ourselves. Of course, those better be free of BPAs because I can't be living in no toxic house after all. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today?